So a new case challenging a state's ban on magazines that hold more than 10 rounds has now been submitted to the Supreme Court for the Supreme Court to step in on an emergency basis and strike down the state ban. So let's break down what is now happening. Now, really quick before I jump this video, I wanna ask you all for a huge favor. I mentioned in a prior video, but we now have a legal guide available. It's gonna be a digital guide. I will have links down below. There is a monthly you know, charge for it, but it's simply to cover the cost of hosting it and doing all that. And also one of the really interesting utilities of it is I also cited to a bunch of documents. So for example, people in California, if you have Freedom Week magazines and maybe you ever get you know, contacted by police or anyone ever has questions about how you legally have those, there are documents that directly quote to the decisions there. Uh, you can pull the decisions there from this legal document and just kind of condenses everything. So you have everything you would need at the tip of your finger. So again, if you're interested, links are down below where you can sign up. So as I mentioned in the intro, in this video, we're gonna be talking about a case which challenges a state's ban on the purchase, possession, and use of magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. It's simply, this is a challenge to a state's ban on so-called LCMs, magazines or large magazines. And really we all know that there's simply standard magazines, but states love to ban these. And now we have a case once again, filed to the Supreme Court. It's in front of the Supreme Court, asking for the Supreme Court to step in on an emergency basis and strike down this ban. The state we're gonna be discussing in this video is the Ocean State Tactical case. It's a case coming out of Rhode Island and it deals with the state of Rhode Island's ban on magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. You know, we've talked about a lot of other cases before. You know, I know people in states like Rhode Island wish I would talk more about their state, but we have so many states that put in place these bans and, you know, we try to cover it as much as possible, but now Rhode Island has their case in front of the Supreme Court, so we need to break down what is happening. So for those not aware, just a couple days before the Supreme Court issued their decision in the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin case, the state of Rhode Island enacted House Bill 6614, which is their Large Capacity Feeding Device Ban Act of 2022. So passed in 2022, just a couple days before the Supreme Court issued Bruin. Now the act here does exactly what the name suggests. It is a flat ban on all devices and all feeding ammunition devices, you know, that are used in semi-automatic firearms uh, you know, targeting, you know, the basic handguns, rifles, shotguns, whatever, and essentially targeting any magazine that is capable of holding more than 10 rounds of ammunition. So a broad sweeping magazine ban on some of the most commonly owned and used magazines. Now this act here does not just make it illegal to manufacture, sell, offer to sell, transfer, or purchase these commonplace magazines and arms, but it also criminalized the mere possession and use of these and allows the state to throw citizens in prison for up to five years, even if the arms that the state now deems you know, criminal contraband were lawfully acquired prior to what happened in this act. Now, one of the also interesting things I believe about this specific act in Rhode Island is there wasn't a lot of leeway. There were only a few options. You could either permanently fix the magazines where they could no longer accept more than 10 rounds. You would have to destroy them or turn them over to the police. So fearing, of course, that this type of law would be used against them, there were a bunch of plaintiffs that filed a lawsuit uh, you know, against the state of Rhode Island and the attorney general in the state of Rhode Island. You know, the applicants here allege that the act violates their constitutional rights under the Second Amendment, and both they also argue that there is a takings. You know, a lot of times we see in these types of lawsuits, there are taking clause arguments where here, because the way the law is structured, your personal property is being taken away by the federal government because they don't really give you options. You either have to destroy them really or give them up or permanently change them, but you're never compensated for you having to you know, destroy or modify or give up your personal property. So here the plaintiffs filed a lawsuit against the state of Rhode Island and they sought originally for a preliminary injunction to be granted by the lower court. But ultimately on review, the federal district court denied that preliminary injunction. Now, if you're not aware of what a preliminary injunction is, it's simply just a temporary form of relief. It prevents this law from being enforced and used against you while the case is making its way through the process. But here the court denied that temporary form of relief and then that led them to then appeal up to the next level. This then made its way to the First Circuit Court of Appeals and on review, the First Circuit Court of Appeals affirmed what the lower court said. And here the First Circuit essentially finds that a state like Rhode Island can flatly outright ban the possession of these types of items. So now the plaintiffs here have filed for Supreme Court review on an emergency basis, seeking for that law in Rhode Island to be overturned, for those decisions to be overturned, and for at least on a temporary basis, 
for this ban to be removed. Now, in their arguments to the Supreme Court, they state that the First Circuit assumed, without deciding, that ammunition feeding devices capable of holding more than 10 rounds are arms within the scope of the Second Amendment, and thus proceeded to consider whether HB 6614 is consistent with our history and tradition. So here's also something very interesting about what the First Circuit did. The First Circuit started, of course, from looking at the text and determining if these types of magazines, if these, you know, if you want to call them accessories, whatever, if these are actually arms. And what the First Circuit found is that, yes, in their opinion, these are arms. So you would say, well, shouldn't that just kind of be open and shut case at that point where you have the First Circuit saying these types of magazines are arms under the text of the Second Amendment? Well, here what the First Circuit does is they then go and do a strange historical analysis to work around the Bruin requirement to find that there is historical tradition and support to flatly ban these types of common arms that are owned by law-abiding people for lawful purposes, not only in the state of Rhode Island, but all across the United States. So here's where I'm mentioning that they kind of changed the historical analysis. They pulled some language from Bruin, which talked about a more nuanced approach where you didn't need a historical twin or a dead ringer. What they did here is they kind of tried to cram in means and scrutiny and balancing of interest and just tried to rely heavily on the public's interest. They said because the technology has changed so much, because this is new technology and new societal concerns, we can take a more nuanced historical approach and essentially meet any justification that we want because if there's this broad sweeping public interest in maybe getting rid of these items, we can say that, yeah, the state is justified in banning them. Here what the plaintiff state is that that backdoor means and scrutiny not surprisingly led the court to defer to the state. And then you're also seeing this weird argument that's been struck down before also in Heller, where you can ban something, at least according to the states here, you can ban something as long as there is an alternative. And what here Rhode Island is arguing is that you have an alternative. Yeah, maybe you can't have magazines more than 10 rounds, but you can have a magazine with 10 rounds and they're saying that's all you need for self-defense and therefore we can ban them. The plaintiffs go on to state that the petition here shows and demonstrates the profound error in the First Circuit's decision, which contorted the court's clear precedent. The First Circuit expressly refused to engage with the principal question under the precedent, whether the plain text covers the conduct that the challenged law restricts and completely ignored the court's common use tests, which prohibits bans on arms in common use today. That's another component where the First Circuit here just completely ignores common use for lawful purposes. These magazines are owned in the millions for common use for lawful purposes, but the state of Rhode Island just wants to overlook that, say under the more nuanced approach, these are so dangerous, it's in the public's interest that we can ban them. And again, that just sounds exactly like means and scrutiny, which has already been struck down. Now, one of the bad things about this case, and we've noted it before in other videos, is the fact that this is an interlocutory appeal. It's an emergency review of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has denied review in multiple cases already just last year or just their last term. Now, in my opinion, if you were gonna ask me if this has any chance, I think it has a very slim chance, especially because when you look at other cases recently decided, like I mentioned, the Fourth Circuit Bianchi case, which deals with rifle bans. I think that is going to be appealed, of course, to the Supreme Court. A writ of cert is probably going to come here any day, and that's a final merits decision, which was recently denied review by the Supreme Court. Um, but it's going to go to the Supreme Court on a final merits decision, and the Supreme Court's going to have a hard time rejecting that because the Supreme Court has said the only thing that they really need right now is a final merits decision. I think ultimately what may happen, the best case scenario for this Rhode Island case is for the Bianchi case to get the Supreme Court this term, the Supreme Court grant potentially review to the Bianchi case, and then maybe you would see the Rhode Island emergency case be put on hold behind Bianchi. I think that's the best case scenario for this Rhode Island magazine ban. But that's what's currently going on right now. The petition has been filed to the Supreme Court for emergency intervention, and we'll have to see how this plays out. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below, and I will try to answer to the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and you would like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm, and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. But as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and never forget this nation was built by Arm Scholars, and this nation will be maintained by Arm Scholars.